for us or you're against us? A little bit of quiet, thanks, while I just do my bit of read here, thank you. Simon Townsend's Wonder World, episode H28-2, XC number 8381, transmission date 4685, record date 2nd 4th 85, dual mono. Hello, hello, and hello, and welcome to my wonder world. And to kick off the show, it's party time. There's nothing more fun than a party. And, you know, I love to throw them, but, you know, people worry about throwing parties. They worry that guests won't turn up or that they won't have a good time. And you, of course, can ensure that guests will have a ball if you put a little bit of time and a little bit of effort into the planning. Now, reporter Brett Clements is renowned for his parties, so he helped this girl out with her party. So you want to have a party, hey, invite heaps of people and have stacks of fun. Well, you don't really need a reason to throw a party, but there is one thing you will need, and that's atmosphere. And atmosphere starts with people. So you invite your friends along, but the scene is still pretty boring, and you've got to do something to brighten it up. Now, there are lots of things you can do to brighten up a party, and you should always start with the walls by hanging lots of coloured crepe paper up. So the place looks a little bit more brighter, but there are still heaps of things you can do to make it even brighter. Like, for instance, adding balloons, which come in all different shapes and sizes. So now your room's a blaze of colour, but there's still heaps more things you can do to really, really brighten up the party. Like, for instance, adding streamers and lays. So having dressed up your room, all you're going to do now is dress up your guests, and you can do that with hundreds of different types of party hats and masks. Well, everyone looks like they're into the spirit of things, but now the one thing this party is lacking is noise. What's a party without noise? Now, you can get your traditional blower that just fills up with air and uh, rolls out, or these days you can get what's called party poppers. Now, there's, a, there's a little charge of gunpowder in there. When you pull this string, it fires out little streamers. One very important thing to remember, gang, don't point at anybody. Why do you think party decorations are really important? No, to give the spirit of a party. Mm -hmm. You must have uh, a little of uh, fun at a party and you need to get into the party spirit. <laughs> Colour and excitement, so to speak, yeah. That's for sure. How many different types of party items do you make? This party's getting right out of hand. <laughs> uh, we make uh, over a thousand different uh, party items when you take into various colour combinations of the item. We'll party, party. 
this whole room full of decorations cost under one hundred dollars. But there's only one problem. It's probably going to cost another hundred to have it all cleaned up again. That, uh, but then again, you can always ask good old mum. Good old mum loves cleaning up messes. Hello, mums, all over Australia. It's people like me you really love, isn't it? <laughs> love a party, don't you, mate? <laughs> right, time for a commercial break, and after that, a look at the Mongolian wild horses. Oh. If you believe there's love inside a bubble, if you believe the dreams are there for those who try, they, you belong with me. So let your mind run free. sleep. Now a story on horses but not your normal everyday horses. This story is about Przewolski horses and the Przewolski horses are a Mongolian wild horse and there are many fascinating stories related to these horses. The armies of Genghis Khan used to ride them into battle and they were true beasts of burden. Now with more on this here's reporter Melinda Rutter at the Western Plains Zoo in Dubbo. Woody. G'day, did you know that over 6,000 years ago a man called Wall was skiing and he discovered a horse, so he called it his prize wall ski horse. No, Philip, it's wrong. It's a Przewolski horse. Right. That's the name of it. Oh, fair enough. Are you doing a story on it? Well, supposedly, but I well, thought it was a no, prize. I'll do it. It's okay. I'll do it. Okay, sure. I don't know what that's got to do with the price of fish in Mongolia. types of horses on earth that you probably would have ever seen but they were first sighted in the early 1800s by a man called Przewolski, hence the name. But they were also depicted in early Chinese artefacts. Now that's pretty strange isn't it? Wild thing, I think I love you. But I wanna know for sure. Przewolskis have quite a few distinguishing features from other horses. Now they've got quite short ears which stand up, short manes that stand up, a line that goes down their back which is actually different coloured fur, short tails and they're quite short and stocky. Oh sorry, um, their tails are actually quite long, they're not short. I was sort of trying to give them a bit of a short complex but I, I apologise. <laughs> There's only 405 Przewolskis in existence. Now that's in the whole world and they're all kept in captivity. They're extinct in the wild. Now they've got 18 of those horses here and five of them are foals. Why did they die out in the wild? I think it's man's influence on them. They're uh, you know, encroaching on their environment, shooting them out and killed them off over the years. So do you think that they'll live on in captivity or do you think they'll oh, become yeah, extinct as well? Most definitely. You know, there's a really good breeding program going throughout the world and they are quite good breeders in captive surroundings. And I guess it's because they're protected and looked after as well. That's right, yeah, they're, they're protected. Their food's there all the time for them. They don't have to um, depend on roaming to find their food and that sort of thing. So yeah. how long would they live for? Do they have a really long lifespan or is it quite short? Yeah, well, there has been a few known to live 38 years. Um, is that long for a horse? To me it seems to be, yeah. <laughs> now write this down. I'll never be your peace. Every day the horses are fed twice a day on hay and horse pellets. Now horse pellets contain vitamins and minerals. These horses look like they're really well groomed but they're not because they're very aggressive horses so you can't actually get in with them. So I guess they might just kick the dirt out of each other. You're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe this, but the zoo, in fact, forgot to put the eye. That's oh why I called it a prize, Walski. What are you doing? Walski. You're 
already done the story. Well, I'm talking about Wall, you see, because Wally was here, he was a big man. In fact, he invented the wallaby. In fact, he... Wow. <laughs> the competition between the reporters. Woody, you should have taken an interest in that story, right? <laughs> we'll take a short break now, and then we'll return with a music clip from Banana Rama. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Love inside a bubble. If you believe the dreams are there for those who try, they you belong with me. So let your mind run free. it's time to meet three girls, three girls who sing, and they're three of the happiest girls that you're ever likely to meet. They smile just like you, mate, and they're called Bananarama, and they get up to all sorts of mischief as they frolic through the streets, but it's all in fun, even the bananas. Now here's Bananarama singing Cruel Summer. <laughs>
Banana Rama. I love those ladies, don't you, Woody? Here's a terrific story for everyone with a sweet tooth. This is a story about chocolate, that smooth and delicious taste treat so many of us love to indulge in. Right, Woody? <laughs> there aren't many companies in Australia that actually make chocolate, but our chocolate is considered to be as good, if not better, than a lot of chocolate that is around in the world today. But how do they actually make chocolate? Do you know, Woody? Philip Tanner compiled this mouth-watering report. How popular is chocolate? Very popular, judging by the amount that we produce in this factory here. Well, how much do you produce? Uh, we pr produce at a minimum of 50,000 uh, kilos a day. That's just one machine, but you in fact have two machines? Yeah, we have two you? machines, yes, two machines. 50,000 on one machine, that's right. So generally Australians have a fairly sweet tooth? Yes, they're very sweet. The main ingredients of chocolate come from the cocoa bean, and this comes in these forms, which includes chocolate liquor, chocolate butter, crumb, and chocolate powder. When you mix this with sugar and also full cream milk, then you get chocolate. Now that's all done on this computer here. You see all the ingredients are uh, totaled into here, into the mixer, and then they go onto this conveyor belt which takes it off to the refinery. And they can mix up to 2,000 kilograms of chocolate every 15 minutes. chocolate comes out of the mixers it looks exactly like this it's still very gluggy and a bit like clay and so they put it through the refiners and what happens in there is it literally gets crushed and crushed and crushed and dried and comes out looking like this really flaky now if you taste this the texture is very sandy and yet the texture of this is very smooth as chocolate should be The refined chocolate is then put in a large machine called a conch, which remelts it. From here it is either sent out in trucks for biscuit factories or other chocolate users, or stored in large tanks. Most chocolate comes in the form of bars, and here is where this happens. The moulds travel along a belt and liquid chocolate is deposited into it. The excess chocolate is scraped off and then it goes along a vibrating belt. The reason it gets vibrated is to get rid of all the air out of the chocolate. It's then cooled and the chocolate is removed from the mould. Dropping the chocolate into the mould to dropping the chocolate out of the mould takes about 24 minutes. Then the mould heads back on its merry way and starts again, while the chocolate goes off to get wrapped. Let me just show you a few of the chocolates that you can get for start. You can get dark chocolate. Rice crisp ch chocolate, white chocolate, milk chocolate, mint chip chocolate, coffee chocolate, and of course cooking chocolate, which is very similar to dark chocolate. And you can get this either in this hard lumpy form or these little pellets. Also, of course, you can get it, these other chocolate products. Yeah. Chocolate, what a good story to do. Problem time, and here she is, Wonder World's very own problem solver. Hi, here's a letter from a girl who wants to shave her legs. I hope it's from a girl. Yes, it is. Dear Danny, I'm 13 years old and not allowed to shave my legs. All my friends shave their legs and I feel very left out. I'm very conscious of my legs being hairy because they're black and show up. Hope you can help me, Mavis. I hope you don't want to shave your legs just because all your friends do. You know, once you start to shave, you are going to keep on shaving at least every couple of weeks. And, as your friends can probably tell you, 
After, after you've shaved your legs, they're going to grow back thicker and faster and even darker than before. But if your hairy legs really are embarrassing you, try talking to your mother. Tell her just how much this problem is worrying you. Ask her if she can suggest another way to remove the hairs. Maybe she would buy you some special hair removing cream. Perhaps shout you to a wax treatment. That's meant to last for a few months. I hope you solve your problem. I'm dear Danny, and I'm here to help. Bye. Hairy legs. I don't know what to say about that. But we'll have something very interesting for you right after these commercials. If you believe there's love inside a bubble If you believe that dreams are there for those who try them You belong with me So let your mind run free Wonderworld, Australian history may be relatively short, but it's colourful and it's eventful. And that history makes Australia what it is today. Now, the best way to see Australian history, how it affects you directly, is to trace your family tree. And that's just one of the things that a group of patriotic Australians encourages other people to do. Now, this group formed in 1901, and it's called the Royal Australian Historical Society. And Edith Bliss, She's a very patriotic reporter, so she decided to look up some of this group's more recent members. Edith? This is History House. It's had that name since 1969 when it became home to the Royal Australian Historical Society. So I guess you really could say that this is one house that's definitely steeped in history. John, what exactly does the Society do? The Royal Australian Historical Society has a large number of members and the whole idea is to interest people in Australian history, the study and the appreciation of our history. Why is history so important? History is what makes us today. Without history, we wouldn't be where we are today, we wouldn't be enjoying the lifestyle that we now have. And how many members do you have? We have over 3,000 members right round Australia. Wow. How much does it cost to join? Uh, it's $30 to join and $35 for a couple. What do they get for their money? Well, you get the use of a marvellous library. We have a library of 8,000 books, records on family history, rare glass slides that people can look at, and we publish a magnificent journal every quarter and a newsletter every month. History never repeats, I tell myself before I go to sleep. In 1918, the Society added the word Royal to their title, and that was by order of Queen Elizabeth's grandfather, George V. And he also granted them the rare privilege of being able to sport the Royal Coat of Arms. People seem to be a lot more interested in history when they can relate it back to a part of their own lives. For instance, tracing their own family history. And the Society have some toys that'll do just that for you. This piece of equipment contains information of all the births, marriages and deaths going all the way back to the early 1800s. And if you don't have any luck finding a family name there, maybe if your family came from New South Wales, you could look up this census of New South Wales. Now, a census is a complete account of everybody living 
everything in one place at that time. It gives you details of what they did for a living and whether or not they were convicts or not, which is also very interesting. And this machine shows microfilm. Now, on the microfilm, they've got copies of all of the early newspapers of those times. History never repeats. I tell myself before I go to sleep. And now we're all going to be lucky enough to have a quick look at some of the important historical relics that belong to the society. The first one being an authentic Captain James Cook signature. And Captain James Cook is also featured on the society's badge. And this, in this framed case, is a real piece of the endeavour. Now I'm talking about the real thing. This is part of the keel, and it's got a message written on it by Sir Joseph Banks. History never repeats. I tell myself before I go to school. There's a light shining in the dark, leading me on to want to change of heart. Oh. I mean, pictures. I'm glad there's organisations like that. I really am. In a moment, we'll be back with a music clip from the beautiful Amy Grant. If you believe there's life inside a bubble, if you believe that dreams are there for those who try, then you belong with me. So let your mind run free. time for a song and this is a song called it's not a song that's the name of it it's not a song but it sure sounds like a song to me it's a terrific song in fact Amy Grant is the singer and uh, keep an eye on her piece of sheet music it does some amazing things this is a fantastic music clip please sit back and enjoy it
Fantastic, I love it. Sue Halford. Sue is a very talented young lady. She's a singer and a songwriter and a musician, and she's an Australian. And at the ripe old age of 20, Sue is already working flat out in the music industry. Now, she's even put out an album. And Sue is the kind of lady that I like to have on my program. She's motivated and she's ambitious. So I asked reporter Philip Tanner to find out a little more about Sue Halford. what's known as a middle of the road singer that means her music's not too heavy it's not too light but just right you might say she's a bit like warm porridge are you stirring me boom boom and if we should be Now it's time for the real interview. Look, I was wondering, when did you get started in music? I started singing when I was about 10 months old. 10 months 10 old? 10 months old. Boy. Yeah. And when did you start playing musical instruments? When I was about four, I had a ukulele. What gives you this inspiration to learn so young? I think it was because I had that environment of music around me with Dad and, and his songs, and uh, I grew up with it. Right, your dad is a producer. Joe Halford, yeah, he's a songwriter producer. I believe even while you were in the hospital, you had sort of a, a musical influence. Yeah, Jay Justin and the Little Paddy did a performance the day I was born. And do you remember that? Yeah, very well. You try to keep your self control. jog along this merry path of life, I'd like to actually show you this. It is, in fact, an album that Sue not only wrote and sung on, but she also produced it, and that means she oversaw the album and made sure that it was exactly as she wanted. What a clever lady. By the way, you would have noticed us keep cutting back to a film clip. This is, in fact, Sue's film clip to her song, The Space in Your Life. Now, you're only 20, but you've done quite a few things in the music industry. What are you up to at this moment? Well, at the moment, I'm very much into production. Um, I just wrote and produced Picciani's single, Martha Song, which uh, is coming out in Italy. Producing records is a, is a big thing. Is it something you've always wanted to do? Always, yeah. What do you hope for for the future? I'd like to go to America. I just hope that people listen to the records and enjoy the music. Look, mate, she's a producer. I can get you some work. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm hot. OK, he's hot. Now, oh, look, I've got this guy here. He's a raw talent at the moment, but being a producer, I reckon you can probably mould him into something great. I'll just let him give you a bash and show what he can do. OK, go for it, Pete, go! If you knew my friend Sue, oh, and you know why I feel blue without Sue. Am I good, am I good? Is he hot? Michael Jackson has no worries. I can dance too. Sue Halford, isn't she great? It's viewer time, and today I'd like to introduce you to two holiday makers, Nicola and Bonnie Daly. And they look like cartoon <laughs> characters, don't they? But they're not, of course. This is a fun shot. It was taken at Magic Mountain on the Gold Coast. And I've got some fun gifts for uh, both of you two fun lovers. Firstly, this is a hula hoop. It comes from the company called Krona Toys. And you'll be able to do all sorts of tricks with that. And this is a record. It comes from Talisman Records. It's called The Space, and it's by Sue Halford. Of course, you remember Sue. She's the lady that you just met on the show. And guess what? 
This is called Guess Who. It comes from the company called Milton Bradley. You've got to actually guess the character on your opponent's card before he or she guesses yours. It tests the brain, and so does this gift. It comes from Ideal Toys. It's, uh, it's sort of like a Rubik's Cube, only this one is shaped like a cylinder. Good luck with that, it will drive you crazy. Right, it's uh, time for a commercial break, and after that, a look at some of the cutest and cuddliest things that you have ever seen. Simon loves to reply to your letters, but he can't unless you include a second envelope with your name, your address, and a stamp on it. You must include this second envelope if you want Simon to return your photo. If you believe Dreams are there for those who try. You belong with me. So let your mind run free. Dolls. Well, you know, I can't say that my favourite childhood toy was a doll. In fact, uh, in those days, boys didn't play with dolls at all, and if they did, they were called sissies. But if I was still a young nipper today, it's quite possible that a doll could actually be my favourite toy, because these days, dolls um, aren't just cuddly, cute toys that look like little babies. No, you can get dolls that are modelled on terrific superheroes and action figures, and lots more. Reporter Edith Bliss dolled herself up for this look at the stunning dolls on show at a recent toy fair. Japan, both boys and girls love dolls. In fact, so much so that they even have a special day set aside every year where they display their collections to their friends. And on this side of the world, it's becoming more and more obvious that dolls are for boys as well. Hey Vaughan, isn't this fun playing with dolls? No, computers are a lot better than this. And two of everybody's favourite superheroes, Batman and Robin. They can show you their fighting form by squeezing their legs together. And they need to be able to fight because wherever there are superheroes, there are also super villains. And in this case, these guys have got to come up against the likes of Penguin and the Joker. And that's no joke. In these days of high-tech and computers, why are dolls still a popular toy? Well, Edith, I think children always need companions, and that's what dolls are. They're friends. They're someone to tell your secrets to, to share your good and bad times with, and to generally play with and have a good time. I wonder what age it is, though, that we, we suddenly grow out of playing with dolls. Well, I think generally, as a rule, it'll probably be somewhere in our teenagehood that we decide yeah. that there are other things. But some people love and care for their dolls in their 30s, 40s, 50s and 60s. Some people mm. just never grow out of liking dolls. But it's more acceptable these days for boys to like dolls, isn't it? Oh, yes, certainly. And particularly with products like Cabbage Patch Kids, there are lots of boys waiting to adopt them. So it's great that boys can enjoy dolls, too. Yeah, they're not sissies. Cabbage Patch Kids. Growing in the Cabbage Patch Kids Growing in the sun And the most amazing thing about a Cabbage Patch Kid Is that each one grows to be a special one The Cabbage Patch Kids have expanded their family. You know the Cabbage Patch Kids, they're the ones that you adopt rather than buy. Well, just to make sure that your Cabbage Patch Kid doesn't get lonely, he can buy himself a pet. They're called Coosers and they're all cuddly, furry 
well, different sort of animals. Each one is as different as you and me. And this is Rose Petal, a new character from Rose Petal Place. Rose, how did you end up being in the land of the living? A beautiful little girl lived in a house where we were growing and she had to leave. Her family were leaving town so she came out into the garden where we were living, started to cry and her tear fell on us and came, brought us to life. Wow. Oh gee, you smell nice. Thank mm. you. I do and so do all my friends. I have five lovely friends and my best friend is Sunny Sunflower. I've also got a friend called Orchid and also Daffodil. We have lots of fun together. Let me guess, orchid smells like a frangipani, right? No, that's not right. And here's a doll who's so much more than just a pretty face. This is exactly what she does. She's called Upsy Baby, and as her name suggests, she gets up all by herself. What a clever baby. Go on, up, baby. For those of you who have maternal instincts, this is Baby Alive, and she's got that name because she's just like a real live baby. She's got a mechanism at the back, which means that she's able to chew and swallow. It comes specially with its own doll food preparation, Look. bottle to feed the baby with, and nappies. I wonder why you need nappies. We can <laughs> right, fairly fit, that's good because after this break, I've got a jazzy fitting story for you. If you believe there's life inside a bubble, if you believe that dreams are there for those who try, then you belong with me. So let your mind run free. Keeping fit, it's very important. And there are all sorts of ways that you can keep fit and you can get really healthy. And many of them, of course, are hard and a little bit boring, but some of them are lots of fun. Now, my fitness friend, Brett Clements, he uh, compiled this story on a fantastic way to get fit. It's a fantastic way because you can dance and you can exercise at the same time. And this is called Jazzercise. Here's Brett. <laughs> It seems it's very trendy getting fit these days, and it doesn't matter what age you are, you can still get into the act. Now, jazzercise is a new form of physical fitness which is sweeping the world. And yes, everybody gets into the act. Jazzercise originated in America in about 1976 and moved to Australia two years later. Now, the beauty of these exercise classes is that they cater for all age ranges, from little fellas right up to big fellas. Somebody to tell. Fitness classes are a combination of dancing and exercises with a lot of different routines, but the routines don't vary from age group to age group. But a seven-year-old would exercise for half an hour, and a 40-year-old would exercise for about one hour. This is some sort of basketball game, I think. You don't have to be real smart to get involved in one of these classes, you see. You just come along, the teacher does the stuff on the stage and you just follow up. Simple.
Obviously, the classes are enormously popular with youngsters, but I would have thought they'd have got enough exercise running around in the playground. Yes, I suppose so, but it's fun, it's enjoyment. We work on cardiovascular. Cardio what? Working on the heart. Oh, the old heart, make it beat faster. That's right. Flexibility, coordination, posture, just and discipline. Is that really important for youngsters, though? Well, if you start with the younger ones, it helps through life as they get older. <laughs> There are about 4,000 people in Australia jazzercising, and it's an international movement, and there are about 3,600 jazzercise teachers throughout the world. Each class costs about $3, and all you really need is a pair of bare feet and a Lycra costume. What do you like about this form of exercise? Learn new dance steps to your favourite music. Why do you like this particular form of exercise? Because it's not like one, two, reach for the sky, three, four, touch the floor. It's much better. Because you make new friends, and friends that you haven't known before, and it's good. Because you learn how to dance to the beat of the music. Because it's good exercise and it exercises and it helps you get fit. Because you can have loads of fun. Exercise. It's fantastic. Anything to keep you moving and grooving. It's time for us to go, but um, can I tell you something really amazing that I discovered when I was looking this week at an atlas? Do you know that there are eight countries in the world whose first letter starts with A? Now, there's Albania, Algeria, there's Andorra and Angola and Argentina and Australia, and there's Austria and Afghanistan. Now, if you look at those names, you'll notice something curious. Seven of them not only start with the letter A, they end with the letter A. Albania and Algeria and Andorra and Angola, Argentina, Australia and Austria, and only Afghanistan doesn't end with an A. And Africa, of course, doesn't count because that's a, that's a continent, not a country. But the only country in the world that starts with an A but doesn't end with an A is Afghanistan. Life's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> I'll tell you something else. When I'm saying goodbye, I always remind you that the world really is wonderful. <laughs> goodbye.